for this one. Um, I'm going to go take my meds and see what happens. Usually when I take them, I, I get sort of sloppy and pass out. Um, they're pretty sedative. Or sedative, however you say it. Um, and that's about it. Let's see how that, that happens. Or what happens. May 2016. Okay, this one is a little nuts. This is what it's like when uh, you're sick. Um, and you're just unable to disconnect reality from your sickness. This is May 6, 2016. Assume it's connected. Got to the airport and grabbed half a sandwich and an iced coffee. Moved across the room to a logical quiet point and sat near a woman talking on the phone. She was talking about her friend in relation to others. She was wearing pink. I think so, but don't remember. She was wearing sandals. 17 people walked by. Oh, sorry for getting louder. I leaned forward. Uh, 17 people walked by or were in the room while I was there. There are areas where you f fall flat, which is true because you don't know what you're doing and where and when to signal in which manner. You don't understand all the available signals as it is. What does grabbing your shirt mean? And you're usually trying to sh uh, straighten it out. A lady uh, in the first plane said, sorry for being new and not knowing what to do. Hair flip means okay or feeling all right. Head scratch is confused or some issue not being addressed properly. Taps glasses is watch people in, in the area. Grab ears, listen or listening, but can also be affirmation in nature. Remember to use color marking when identifying an area since they use colors as flags and not always as logistical areas. Choosing an, an instinctual place to sit isn't always the, f the fit place to sit as evidence through, boarding area, through the boarding area and picking the exact opposite area that you thought they would sit in. The goal is to blend in and coordinate around the person so that it's independent of where they can look is where you'll be, I think. Two ladies, one in a sundress and the other in pants and a top. One man with a beard and a yellow bag drinking a coffee. One man with a shaven head and bright eyes. Another lady in a jumper with glasses. Are they spending this many resources to talk to you or are you being delusional? Something about money from the two ladies couldn't hear constant listening is tiring but it has to be has to happen because there's nothing else to be done perhaps it gets easier with practice learning to not stop natural movements while listening is needed notice i tended to stop moving when trying to focus being able to do both uh is important i think they said there's no money in this or something but then who paid for their tickets to be in the same flight as me was the strong man on the plane directed at me he spoke of something of he spoke f6 something with benefits of 975 else ways he mentioned clinton and spoke at length needing to be subtle finesse he said though he continued to speak until being told not to from the attendant they appear to speak to one another through the conversation but that could just be another be over connecting uh sorry for the sniffles the attendant was identifying con constantly she kept staring and blinking every time i made eye contact uh with her the whole flight, not to mention the gee mouth movement, like a grimace smile must have messed up. The two people behind me were talking but stopped when I said asshole to her a remark about are the wings broken after when hitting turbulence. Not about cracking jokes either, I hate flying. Lady in Pink said not the easiest to work with, which is true, but that isn't easy to figure out and I'm not apologizing for dealing with this in the way I've had to because I've not known how else to do so. But it could have been easier and could have been easier from this point on i'm not sure how to deal with the anger towards the group though because there's nowhere to put it and no constructive way to get rid of it because it's a group versus one person and they have all the training and tools to work with in the system they've created and i'm bashing my head trying to learn how to do it as quickly as possible something about a, a meeting today something about it not needing to be coffee uh but i can't think of a Places to go that don't cost money to get out of the house. Though I will start going to the library to get work done if my computer ever starts up again. Once the iPad charges fully, I was planning on heading out. Wish I could just remember where the other one went. Charging took too long today. One of the ladies said I asked about their weekend. It's weird talking to a nameless, faceless set of eyes. It's weirder setting still to think of them as friendly just to remain calm and stop becoming aggravated from the constant watching. It's simply... It's similar to being in a zoo pen. You get used to it because you don't have the power to turn the watching off. 
because they just start flickering the lights when you turn off the computer. You're addicted to the device and interaction type as it is. I think that that's why they pen the animals together so they have something to be around other than the audience. Something about them being about there being multiple things I could do. Control mechanics would be fun, but not sure how to get into a workable area in my current mindset. The other problem is that when to know they're not talking through the television sets. It's impossible to tell. If the eye movements are constant and consistent enough, starting watching multiple sets on the plane to see if they controlled just one set or if it was easier to run them and tan them, they were able to control the computer while I was in the last flight to A, so why not? Why wouldn't it be possible to interact with the television feed? Testing was inconclusive at the time. While watching x file Scully blink 31 times straight yesterday, not sure if it counts to them or what. The problem with being delusional is that it's impossible to not question things as being a form of delusion from the diagnosis onward. They said that I was an entity, which could mean a few things, and that I have a separate narrative from others, or that I make a delusional set of narratives for myself to compensate for what's going on. At the sushi restaurant in A, Bearded guy with guys at the bar, couple at adjacent table, male mouthpiece, fe family to the right and behind the couple, uh, Asian lady tapped her glasses, wizard's game on the television. The sporting stuff is funny since it's all a game. The wizard in the Corvette at Goodwill when picking up the first Escher. Merry Christmas. Get to be dicks, but don't take it out on the people monitoring you because though it comes off as one collective movement, there's not all connected. Uh, S is not one of them, but he may know something more than he's stating pick his brain when he's talking see what you can get see if you can break that flow it's very quick but you saw its movements i did the biblical 313 244 416 or was it 614 i don't know why i wrote it down both ways i had, the problem i have is that i don't know which book to reference and could read meaning into multiple verses no but it was worth a shot it's not hard to make religious connections when you have nothing else to tie things to so you have people following me around on travel so that they can remain close enough or intersect at given locations in, a, in an action set. Multiple people on payroll to give information across. Wouldn't it be more cost effective to sit down in a secluded room and just ask a bunch of questions if, to get actual, actual answers? Like, what, it, what is this? Who am, I, who am I in this? When did this start? Why me? How many of my interactions were staged for a potential outcome? How many of, are there like this? How many are you? When did you personally get into this? Why did why did you? When does it start to make sense? Did I did I get help? Uh, do I get to help change things? How do I get to help if so? If not, what is the point of this exercise? What is the point of continued monitoring given how it shuts down the ability to think clearly? Why is J a liability when she's more trustworthy than you? How does a person get to this position? Is it based off of a family line? Is it a set of markers in the personality over time? Is it a collection of environmental interactions to cause this permutation to become self-aware? When aware of this sort of thing, how do you cope with the fundamental perspective change? How do you stop it from wearing you down until you go mad? How do you handle needing so much information but not knowing uh, how or when to ask for it, let alone assuming if it's true information or not just the placative? Uh, placative, sorry. There is some predatory section of the group. There is some recuperative section as well. They are watchers, actors, and speakers. There is misinformation in an attempt to form outcomes or I'm unable to accept to be true based on the size and odd shape of the ideas themselves. How do you learn to fake being normal again for appearance sake? What markers am I supposed to be giving in a given situation an affirmation or uh, declination? Um, blinking once for yes, twice for no isn't foolproof and it's possible to give the wrong answer without meaning to. I can assume part of myself made answers are, <clears throat> excuse me, are correct, but have to assume that most of them are, are not. I can't trust something that I don't know or understand because it would be foolish to do so. But I can sit there and listen and see if it's worth trusting anything. Tame the information down and cross-reference it with the other information and see if it sticks. Don't advertise bad things because you don't know the audience or what they'll do. Learning to look relaxed is important, but also remembering to respond when appropriate. Learning to shut off in public is what I used to do to be comfortable. Draw something and listen to music on repeat to create a white noise barrier. Listen outside of that. Why us? Why is it that when you're trying to listen to something, it gets harder to pay attention and every little noise from across the room comes in all at once and is equally as loud or louder than people that are talking whom are the things to be listened to even though they're closer? I don't know. 
if I make information, you will use it in a test to see if it wor if it works to see if I'm right. As the CDA ad on Reddit implies, since it was a textbook example of, for what I wrote down and worked like I said it would, given that the right mar uh, marketing, sorry, right marketing material was used, flashing lights and some sort of neat, some sort of, something sort of neat. So it's an information drain movement, and then it costs nothing but recording interactions and letting the person give away as much information for free as possible. There is no point in paying for something when you're paying for someone to watch the, the material in any case. Why is it beneficial to pay for secondhand information in the form of a paycheck to a watcher than to pay the information maker first hand and pointing it towards one towards other needed areas of information gathering and seeing what other connections it makes. Wouldn't it become a more reliable form over time as it figured out what to do and not to do? But if you were marked to be recorded from a young age, it must mean that they had a good enough reason to mark that recording and now it's important enough to com communicate with that person because it stopped being useful or there is a chance it could become more useful in doing so or at least the person thinks that in the, is the case and it's worth the expenditure to see what happens given we know literally everything about this target and his idiosyncrasies and all of its possible known movements within an area. You have plenty of grandchildren ideas and you need protection from what we won't tell you from yourself in part you don't understand the consequences of the actions you take because if you did you wouldn't have taken them there are characters in history that have wards and groups protecting them and it's not hard to make to think of the logical connection but what does this make my family then what does this make k and dad or is it not connected and you're trying to too hard to make everything make sense Someone had to pick the person to be watched. Someone decided that a child was worth all the work, but not worth giving a mentor set to understand the idea of watching itself in a greater context when it finally noticed, unless it's what ha is happening now in this seemingly stilted way. There is a reason children in a position of potential power, if this is to be that, and that it's recorded and interacted in such a way, implies a greater sense of importance over a person not being inter uh, in, uh, interact interacted as such are given mentors or sets of mentors in those books. They are not only needed, but absolutely essential to widen the perspective of the person being warded to be able to understand large and complex situations and ideas at once and be able to break them down into needed workable parts. You can learn to do that on your own, but with a mentor set, you get the benefit of being able to ask questions without fear of reprisal and you learn much, much more, much faster than if by doing it yourself. It also builds an inherent set of trust mechanics into the unit because if the mentors don't abuse the connection, there's no reason not to fight their lead unless it reaches the, the point where it's required for the betterment of the unit being taught. Paraphrasing from a ignore the royal significance, uh, prince to set of advisors over the course of the prince's lifespan. If they have taken the time to learn form as many as, uh, sorry, to learn from as many of their tutors as possible, sorry, from as many of their tutors as possible, and taking the lessons to heart, then they potentially become the more well-rounded perversion of the collection of lessons and ideals, outside of the potential wait waiting of the lessons from the teachers they likely am amount or they liked or amount of tutelage over time. Head scratches confused over some issue not being addressed properly. Tap glasses as watch people in the area. Remember to use color marking uh, to identify an area and not always just logistical areas. Choosing a restriction of place to sit isn't always the right place to sit as evidence. Excuse me. Uh, as evidence through the boarding area and pick the exact opposite area that you would think they would sit in. Two ladies, one man with a beard, another with a shaven head, and another with lady with glasses. Are they spending this many resources to talk to you or are you being delusional? Sorry about that. There's a little bit of a repeated text in there uh, that I didn't edit out because I didn't notice. Again, I'll leave it in there because it was made when I was sick. Uh, it's not complete, but it does lead into the next part of the thought set, which is you can't be that different from other people, but logic di dictates that you must be somewhat to significantly different on these interactions when we be taking place. You're not a child, but it's easier to write in terms of one because it oddly feels like everyone else has much more information than you and you're playing keep up to see if you can figure out it out yourself like you did when you were a kid and you had to read the subtext of every single conversation before it became covert overt mom switched 
from tarot cards to angel cards so you have multiple lines of possibilities and run them in tandem and see which one sticks out over time you can connect everything if you try but it's not always beneficial to do so being able to remember everything from your life is also not beneficial because it creates the chance for falsely positive connections but the on the other side of that you have to learn to trust your ability to determine a situation given you have the ability to determine anything at all so the wizards like to play is spending a lot of effort at least from a speaking point relative to a listening point being multiple ver versus a singular they don't want to hear the bad stuff but don't want to pay for the good stuff or so use or be used or they do and you're not listening properly because it's something that it doesn't make sense in a sequence then a large section of the sequence becomes corrupted trying to decode the mistaken or broken read you lose time by attempting to listen to it in real time and it may be better just to remember everything at once than go back and pull it apart like you did on the plane I think I saw how time works once. It breaks into multiple or possible actions, which you go through and all potential potentials throughout. And the one that happens breaks at the end and goes in, into the next parts to work the system from any given control me mechanism. So it becomes a game of what and who can be influenced, when to do what, when, and then control the how of what they do through re repetition and consequence avoidance. I still remember the shape of the break. It's very pretty and very, very large. I've not been able to see it I have not been able to not see it since it happened, and it's like a sticker on one side of the wall inside my head. I wonder how many times my perspective has been broken or rewritten larger than a singular emotional sense. May 7th, 2016. Something else. The argument started because I was being quiet and wouldn't answer her every time she asked me what I was thinking. I can't say people are signaling all the time to her because it's a sign of my illness. She wants me to start identifying you in public so she can tell me I'm seeing and hearing things. I can't tell if she's signaling to you, but it sure as hell feels like it at all times. Uh, she's not a face-touchy person, but she'll have bouts of extended facial touching like she had on a drive as cars of certain colors came by or passed by, red and white most often, though I think there was a black one as well. I wasn't paying too much attention because it's, it's upsetting to watch. I wouldn't hold her hand at the store because it was uncomfortable, but she took it to me and I didn't want to hold her hand at all. She's small enough that it throws my shoulder out of whack after a long enough time. On the way back home, we were stony and I explained what was bothering me, that I was unreasonable to expect me to always tell her everything that's on my mind, that it's often not interesting or useful like I need to cut the grass because I can't tell her what I really think. I also mentioned that she told me off for talking to the dogs, and she said I was talking to the dogs more often than I was talking to her, which isn't true, and who cares if I talk to the dogs for a minute or two, because I want to see what kind of questions they respond to, and I was trying to pass the time while she worked on proof-checking her labels. Then we started talking, and I told her I have to double-check literally everything I say before I say it, because if I say the wrong thing, it would come off as delusional, and at any time she could have me committed again. She said... Did you think it was easy to do? And I replied, I know it wasn't. And if she was going to play that card again, I would lose it. She, we went into the house. I don't know how much she heard, but she went to the bedroom and I sat at the TV room opposite the side, on the opposite side of the house. She was yelling into a pillow and crying. Then she came out and said she thought she couldn't be with me because I would always resent her for having me committed and that I would always hold that over her. I said I wasn't holding it over her as she left the room and I stayed where I was for a few minutes and then went over to the, her side of the house and told her I didn't think she would I didn't think she would do that it was just something I was worried about and she came in and cried and told me that she went through uh, before deciding to commit me multiple psychotic psychotic episodes and concurrent days of openly suicidal discussions she didn't see the first attempt at getting ready to hang myself and that it was the hotline suggestion and that she trusted them enough to follow through, as well as it was their decision at this point to bring me in, and even then she didn't want to. Eventually, she didn't even want to be one of those couples that people pity or feel badly for. Poor Jay. Uh, her. And that she wants us to be the underdogs that have a, a lot of hard stuff happen to them, and then they get to do something good. Why are you worth lying to her? May 7th, 2016. Again. Now S knows I'm I'm ill because I couldn't help myself and texted him something stupid to which he couldn't have had a reply for. My family thinks I'm ill and don't want me to talk about it with them because it makes 
them uncomfortable or they just don't want to hear it. My grandma thinks I'm Ellen is worried about us, but is still working to keep contact and isn't asking anything from me. Jay, my friend, knows I'm ill and plan to visit to see how I'm doing. Haven't seen C in ages, but wasn't in the right mental state to be around people for the last few months, though I do miss hanging out with him. That seemed the entirety of my support network. Less than a handful of people I actually like. Don't know how to pretend to be normal anymore, and it's obviously changed my demeanor. Jay's, uh, my wife, is feeling lonely just being around me, so I must be shutting her out as well. What do I lose by pointing you out? You're tasked with guarding me, not at the cost of my mental or social well-being. Why would it bother me to make your job harder? What is the attachment from being monitored? A form of Stockholm Syndrome? A 5 to 100, 500 to 1 odds was bullshit. It's greater than 50-50 because if it was negative, then it wouldn't be discussed. She's not the liability. Liability. She's the reason I got better in the first place because she, because the world in my perspective isn't a place worth being a part of, and the people are frustratingly slow. You've never been a small group. From the interaction points, you have had a vast network of assets, personnel at your disposal, and you're spending constant resources to monitor and travel with or intersect with a seemingly daily basis. That you're more you're more relaxed on weekends, or I care to think you are. You swap between male and female sets, or choose to make half of the double-sided team more evident within a given situation or time frame it depends on the time of day and type of interaction and location from five artists gym bunnies to static markers within a field of view you color code and coordinate breaking the group into subsects of visual markers audio streams and physical pointers towards a goal of, or time to listen to or pay attention it's all very flat i wonder why you choose to speak and act so slowly what to write about may 7th 2016 you said it was too bad we couldn't use it at the airport before hitting A. Well, was that in regards to the control mechanic? You already do that, so I don't understand why it wouldn't be useful, or was it based on being able to use what I produced? No, because you're playing as though you're having a difficult decision to work through, when in all reality, you don't, and it's some misguided attempt at giving the chance, if not working together, an option. You can taste a lie, and even forms of misdirection when you want to pay attention. I wonder what... It would be like for you to have a proper conversation with me in person. Would you be uncomfortable or would you be able to hide your inconsistencies under a layer of trained detachment? I've never been allowed or allowed myself honestly to really focus on a person completely. Every time I started to, to the person would get unsettled and eventually claim I was some sort of psychic. This is honest. This has happened multiple times. And I don't really believe it. Not something I think is real or true, but has happened often enough to mention it. Mildly unhinged with a liquid edge. I wonder what it is like to actually fully work on something, to use everything. What is it, why is it, why is being a psychotic a bad thing when you don't get to pick being that way? You said, Lady in Pink, if you don't know something, then tell us and we can work on it together. Welcome. I don't understand the physical nature of magnetic force. I can see the shape it would make within a given space, but I don't understand how to determine the numbers the force is outputting. I haven't found a shape to volume mathematics to let me fill in the blanks. I can build the shapes in relation to the whole, but actual numbers delude me. I don't know how to find that information because I don't know what one grain of magnetic ferromaterial puts out or how large that volume is. The suit is done in my head, but I, ha I don't have a pattern to overlay the systems over. You said the idea is overly engineered, but you've, you've not seen it in any collective method, nor the way the, the forms within fit within each other. I could build a game and make it as addictive as possible to, raising some, to raise some money, I guess. You said you happen to randomly understand quantum computing, but you offer no proof or explanation of the concepts. Not above lying to achieve some goal. Would, would it be easier to break the version of myself and pretend you don't exist? What's the gain from doing that? Uh, one moment. Oh, no, I've lost my spot. Uh, there we go. Knowing is wearing, but the mind has no choice but to accept what it, it sees unless it can, can't understand the concept of a partial whole which a single person's perspective is limited to. But you can make a prosthetic perspective based around another's view to counter your own. Making room with them to triangulate a movement is also just as easy. A delusional mindset would, do, would make it a habit. So would one that couldn't help it. Then basic interactions become flavored by the types of marker sets and sets of information to ascribe to within a given situation. Hearing is the hardest. I wonder what's causing the heart murmurs. I wonder if he'll hurt me the next time he sees me. He did the last time. Is it better to focus on many objects at once and build a plan of attack from the logical missteps or idleries of 
those movements or attempts to rein the focus into one position and pull it apart as quickly as possible? Do you care if people know you're staring at them? No. You're very stuck based on your actions. Apparently there is no getting better from that level of sickness. But you do constantly attempt to do so, though you can't figure out which reason why. Why do these people matter? Do they? What does the public have any right to the private? They don't. You're, you're not okay with it. Why work towards anything at all but if basic rules for an unfiltered life were broken so purposely? What was the goal other than to humiliate? Why weren't safeties out in place where the diagnosis was made in childhood? They don't. They didn't stop the abuse. They recorded it instead. Why has seeing a room as a whole become boring? Is, is, is it because it's easier? When do you find something that in life that is intellectually satisfying in a continuous way? You see so many other people enjoying their pursuits and they seem unable to see their lack of restrictions having made their own ire after being conditioned over time. The body will waste away, the mind will progress and then lament the body's rot until they're noting there's nothing to be done. The suit was an attempt to share the cure for aging physically until the science catches up. The body has a number of movements that can make a suit that works against the body handedly stretched those movements over the longest curve possible over time the algorithm learned to create an efficiency curve to extend the inner life uh, line even further it is possible to make any combination of things given the right data sets but why be helpful to those that scorn you at which point does the loneliness become something else when is it happy again Break humanity into a set of movements and vectors and build a class of control mechanics and work it from the outside in, re rewrite the system. It's not difficult, but doesn't seem to be information to give to someone else because they use it for their own gain or just as test subject. If it is your, if, sorry, why is, is your gain better than theirs? Because it's never been about self's enjoyment, but what is most important uh, to the majority's encounters that have been hurtful or damaging from a consistent standpoint outside of its own actions then because of it. Why would a man being held back by another man walk up to you and tell you that you'd be nothing and be so furious, drunken but not drunk, as you, at you unless he'd been watching you? Blue denim jacket, black shirt, blue jeans, black and gray boots, long gray hair fading to white, angry eyes, mustache, is it really photographic? There are only breaks when the environment got too dark um that would be abuse or violence that caused against me like having my arm broken or anything like that um but can be accessed if wanted and i really don't as i say i say though though not wanted do people not do that too uh, remember everything does it get does it get to stop being alone not your problem you're just stuck with me for now for some reason there was play games but don't seem to want to do more than then sort and categorize your movement. Okay, so for May of that year, I have 35 entries. Um, I've broken it up roughly, I'm thinking into seconds or thirds, I'm, I haven't checked. Um, I'm not going to check, I don't. The longer this takes, the more episodes I make, so the happier I am. And I'll just shift to the next gear pretty quickly next month if I, if I come to a wall. Um, yeah, so that is what it's like when you're delusional and you have a mind like mine that records everything. Um, I have a note about myself that is sort of asinine. Um, when I was 20, I got given an IQ test. Uh, I got a perfect score on one of the regions um, for mathematical ability. I'm not great at math anymore. I used to, I used to be quite good. Uh, they say that be becoming schizophrenic or schizo schizoaffective or schizophrenic, you receive some form of brain damage. Like some people have frontal lobe damage and they become overly sexualized. Other people have uh, other forms of damage and they, they just they lose about 10% of their cognitive abilities. So I believe I have some form of brain damage from this because my memory shifts like sand but still has the same videotape quality that it had before. Though my, my working memory is like, I can't remember from the last four years pretty much anything. So I must have been psychotic in a low grade while the meds were working. And it's, so I'm using this book as a way to kind of go through what happened. 
and occasionally I'll lean forward and you make it make it louder in your ear and I'm sorry for that that's just me not realizing my place in my in my studio I'm still learning um, but this is fun if you have questions message me uh, at anchor.fm slash divergent mind I'll answer them if they're appropriate uh, if I can once we get into the harder stuff like you know upper level science stuff which is way fun that's a ways away though this is all dealing with uh, mental issues um but it's been a pleasure i hope you have a lovely day um and here's to the next episode bye for now jay please visit Anchor.fm slash Divergent Mind to leave a message so that I may get back to you. Thank you. Have a nice day.